Joel, uh, hi. I'm really, really sorry. I was trying to get prepared for this, uh, this presentation that you wanted me to help out with, but uh, I, I, I've, I've lost it. You've lost what? Yeah, I, I'm looking for a great big gigantic bug. I, I had it just a second ago, and then I... I oh, like there that it is. one? Yeah, like this one. Oh. This is Sheila. Like Sheila, Sheila is a giant prickly stick insect. Really? That's right. If you want to get fancy, it's Ecstatosoma tiaratum. Wow. That's right. So this is an Australian insect. Have you ever seen a stick bug outside? Yes, I have. Like Here in Arkansas, stick? we have lots of walking yeah, sticks. Yeah, that's right. Walking sticks are part of a family of insects called phasmids. Now, phasmids include all stick bugs and leaf bugs. In fact, the longest bug that exists in the world is a phasmid. Really? How long does it get? It's about 13 inches long. It's a tight wow. stick bug. It's about that big. But this is kind of a smaller one. If you can That's call that not small. not very small. That's right. Now, in Australia, in the wild, females like Sheila can get up to around eight inches long. That's pretty she's big. pretty big. Now, she lives here at the museum, so she's a little bit smaller, but she's still a pretty big bug. Yeah. Now, uh, do you want to get a little bit closer to her? Um, do you think it's a good idea? Not particularly. Why not? She seems kind of scary. She does kind of look scary, but I promise she's not. In fact, what this animal does is mimic dangerous animals. Like what? Like praying mantis. So when she waves her arms around, she's trying to make us think she's a mantis. And mantises eat meat. So other animals in the wild will say, nah, never mind, I don't want to deal with this thing. It will probably eat me. What she can also do is curl up her abdomen to resemble a scorpion. Oh, my god! Just gosh. like that. So she pretended to sting me, but she can't bite or sting. In fact, they don't even have scorpions in Australia. Wow. Yeah, that's right. But the really fascinating thing about this insect is that behavior of mimicking other animals begins right at the start of their life cycle. When they're a little baby. That's right. You see, the way these animals reproduce is also really unique. Females like this can reproduce through something called parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis. So they don't need males to reproduce. That's exactly right. So what she'll do is lay about 70 to 100 eggs at a time, and she'll flick them out of her tail, just kind of curl up her tail like that and flick them away. One like a catapult. Other. Right. So if there's a male around, the male will fly to where the eggs land and lay all kinds of goo all over them to fertilize them. And so if that happens, they'll hatch in about four months. But if the males don't fly near them and don't fertilize the eggs, the eggs hatch anyway. It just takes a little bit longer, and since you don't have that genetic material imprinted from the males, you won't get any new males. So here at the museum, we just have a sort of uh, perpetual bug machine here with our females because they just keep laying eggs and reproducing. So we just have a tank full of Sheila's. Just a tank full of Sheila's. They're fantastic. So they're endemic to Queensland and New South Wales down in Australia, so you're not going to find them anywhere else but there. Well, Australia is a big country, and that's that Queensland is a big area. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And these bugs are all over the place down there. In fact, they're really, really popular to keep as pets because folks who like insects would like to have an insect that's a little bit larger so they can kind of you know interact with it and hold it in your hand and also uh, they, they don't move too fast they don't scurry around like a lot of other bugs do she seems pretty friendly she's pretty friendly would you like to hold her sure right, go ahead so let me tell you the most fascinating thing of all not only does she pretend to be a scorpion and pretend to be a praying mantis but when these eggs are flicked away, sometimes they're taken down into ant colonies by ants. Do the ants eat them? Well, they only eat the stuff that's on the outside. You see, when the eggs come out of the females, they're covered in lipids and proteins that provide really good fuel for ants. So the ants will eat all that goo off the outside of the eggs and just leave the eggs in the colonies. And then what happens? Well, the eggs hatch. Now, ants are a very territorial type of insect, so if you were an ant among thousands of ants, and you found a, 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 an intruder that had been born into your colony, would you be happy about it? No. What I'd would you do? Probably eat it. Probably try to attack it. That's right. Exactly. So what these animals do is the baby giant prickly sticks, which at that stage are called nymphs and don't have as many, you know, sticks and prickles on them yet, they look like a bunch of ants kind of all in the line together. So those baby nymphs, those baby prickly sticks, will actually mimic the movement of ants to convince the ants that they are ants too, and they'll move right out of the colony and then go live their lives. So these guys pretend to be other things their entire lives. That's absolutely When correct. they're babies, they pretend to be ants. When they get a little bigger, they pretend to be sticks and leaves. Mm -hmm. And then if they're threatened, they pretend to be praying mantis or scorpions. Absolutely right. Wow, Sheila, you're yeah. very talented. Well, the males also have one additional talent that I'd like to tell you about. You Which see, is what? The males send off a defensive spray it oh, smells like really skunk. bad, yeah, to kind of let other predators know, hey, smell me, I smell terrible, you probably don't want to taste me. Right. But here's the catch. That smell to the human nose is almost identical to peanut butter. Really? So if you were in Australia and you were stuck in the brush and you were starving to death and you found a great big juicy bug to eat and it smelled like peanut butter, would you want to eat it? 
I'd have to think about it. I really like peanut butter. Well. So I probably would. And I really like bugs, too. So, well, Sheila doesn't have to worry about it, though, because she doesn't smell like peanut butter. No, that's true. She just lives here at the museum, and she's very, very happy. In fact, here at the museum, we feed them red tip fetinia, which grows all over the place here. In Australia, they eat eucalyptus, but we can give them blackberries and roses and all kinds of fun leaves to eat. Now, can people get these as pets in the United States? Absolutely, they can. You just got to look into your local laws and find out about importing bugs from other countries into, into your state. Yeah. And in fact, uh, actually, they're really, really popular pets, especially in the UK. For some reason, the Brits are crazy about these guys. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Sheila, I appreciate you being here. And thanks, Kevin. Thanks for uh, coming by. No problem. Sheila and I are going to go watch Ants. Fantastic. The movie with Woody Allen. We're both fans. Oh, yeah. Big yeah. fans. Yeah. Sure. All right. See you later, Joel. Bye. Joel, I'm going to talk to you like I'm trying to look for this bug that I can't find. Right, because right. Because what the gag is is that the bug is on my hand. Yes. And it's obvious that the bug's on my hand, but I'm pretending that I actually don't know. Oh. So that's what we're doing. There's it's a, bit. a bug on your hand. There's a bug on my hand. Sorry. Is that good? Yeah, that was good. They do this little bobbing thing, right. too, like a leaf blowing in the wind. Yeah. Which is kind of ridiculous because they do it when there's no wind. Yeah, they, well, that, that, I mean, like, it's... The idea is that they're just a leaf blowing in the wind, but really it's more of a comforting thing to them. Like, it just makes them feel better to know that they're doing that. So it's kind of like sucking their thumb. Because it, it's not really that effective. But It's just like grooming your beard right now. <laughs> she loves I take them home and let them do that, actually. Yeah.